Uh, well, hello everybody and welcome back to Too Weird Didn't Watch, the show where my kid stands outside the door and screams for Brentley. I'm wanted. <laughs> no, this is a show where we uh, make fun of movies based on nothing but their odd descriptions. Uh, we had a themed episode last week and foolishly... We looked into other possible themed episodes. And These are fun and you know it. It's President's Day. Yeah. There are some movies about the presidents. Uh, many of them apparently are by Oliver Stone, Brentley. I was going to hum Hail to the Chief, but all that came to mind was God Save the Queen. Bum, bum, ba, bum, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, 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 bum. Indeed. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Quite. Yes. Uh... So we're going to uh, we're going to dig into some of these and see what we can mine out of them. Some of them are in our lifetime. So uh while we have not seen the well, movies, we still had presidents. We did watch <laughs> some of the actual events play out. And let's actually start with the one that was in our lifetime, Brentley. Uh we're going to talk about Oliver Stone's W. W. D- uh, which is uh, it's just the, le- the the you know how it's pronounced, right? It has to be pronounced that way. You can't just say W. Sir. W. Excuse me, I, I would like to check out the film W. Like, nobody does that. No, no, it's no. W. Um, very short anecdote. I used to work at a library, and we had DVDs. Good anecdote. Yep. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's longer than that. Okay, yeah. Not that short. This was one of the movies we frequently checked out. Right. And every single person pronounced that way. Admittedly, we are in the South, but still, are, it was great. We are in the South, Brantley. <laughs> Told in a nonlinear fashion. The adult life of George W. Bush is presented from his days in college to the end of his first term as U.S. president. Not really yeah. a lot to mine out of that. Glad I'm disappointed you didn't try to read that as W. Issues presented include not being <laughs> able to find his way in his early adult life. I don't know where I'm going. But knowing that he wanted to have something to do with baseball, despite not being a good enough player to make it into the majors. And concurrently with the presidency of his father, George Bush, becoming a born again Christian with the, quote, voice of God directing him to do things. So let's talk about W real quick. Obama, people didn't like Obama. People did like Obama. He's very divisive. People are very angry about Trump or people support him. Very divisive. W wasn't super, you know, popular, but he was entertaining as crap. I think Trump is pretty entertaining as well. Trump is terrifying. Oh, no, I've been getting a lot of entertainment out of this presidency so far. I'm horrified. He's like Futurama's Nixon and Bender combined. I mean, it's it's a little bit ridiculous that he got elected, but the ridiculousness is what I am entertained by. Yeah. It's like, this is actually happening. This guy's still tweeting. He's president, and he's still tweeting like he used to tweet. <laughs> there's a, By the way, there's like a co-written byline t- on his Twitter account. Like another guy who was helping his man him manage his Twitter account and how, like what tweets is he writing? Because I haven't seen any of them. Is there somebody else? So this isn't about Trump, but it is is he hiring this guy to tweet in his voice? Has he found somebody else who can tweet Ill- illegals crossing the borders? Exclamation point! Bad. Oh, he hired a Texan. Possibly. <laughs> Uh, so obviously Oliver Stone, probably not a big George W. Bush fan. This idea of him wanting to be a baseball player, that's kind of interesting. Like he wants to get into baseball, he wants to have something to do with baseball, but it's like, I can't play, but I do have a buttload of money. Yeah. I guess I'll buy a baseball team, (laughs) which is a great response. I mean, that's not, and that's not, that's that's fair. Well, yeah, it's also similar to uh, back in the day you had patrons, right? Mm -hmm. It's people who loved art, were not artists, but man, I'm sure going to pay some artists to do some art Yeah, for me. So I, I, that's not, you know, I mean, you can hate on them for being rich, I guess, but I don't see that as being too ridiculous. There is the whole voice of God thing. Was, was that about him or his dad? No, that's his da- well, so he he talks about how he, when he's concurrent with the president of his father, George Bush, he gets becomes a born again Christian, which I didn't realize he waited that late in life. Um, and then apparently God tells him to run for Texas governor, despite showing no interest in politics beforehand. I don't know if God showed no interest in politics beforehand or George W. Bush. 
he had tired of the whole separation thing. He's like, you know what? It's gone for uh, <laughs> for uh, two hundred years. It's a. Uh, I need to step in now. <laughs> God's like, wait a minute. You have a president. That that's pretty cool. I like this constitution thing you guys have got going on here. This is cool. This is pretty neat. It's like those Greeks had back in the day. Hey, hey George, 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 you should run for governor. <laughs> like, but I was having so much fun coaching the baseball team. He's like, no one cares about that, George. Run for governor. I like the idea that he didn't want to. He's like, God, for real? Like, I know Jesus and everything, but the baseball team, <laughs> the baseball team, God, <laughs> if you don't want to go to hell. You better run for governor. Dag nabbit. God's got an interesting voice from you. <laughs> Sounds like he's been smoking a lot. <coughs> <coughs> run for governor. <coughs> God, God, you okay? <laughs> you okay up there, God? Never start these things. <laughs> Started uh, back in 500 BC. Never quit. And as the president... Oh, okay, so continuing his flashing around different things he does in his life as president directs the invasion of Iraq on the tenuous Intel of Saddam Hussein possessing weapons of mass destruction. That latter move was the outward goal of homeland and global security without a mention to the public of the goal of oil security. Boy, has that really worked out for us? Well, yeah. Also, I like the idea. So this is the whole conspiracy thing. Obviously he's going to be like, we went there for oil, blood for oil. Spending a trillion dollars plus on this war that we don't have to shore up oil reserves does not seem like a great investment. It's not worked out well for us. Especially when we have our own oil. But also, from a storytelling point of view, I think the angle that he wanted to complete his father's legacy, go back into Iraq and finish what Senior Bush had started, is a much more compelling character arc Mm -hmm. than just, like, evil Bush in the... Paw of oil and also God. It, I like that it doesn't seem to be doing like the whole evil Bush thing. Uh, yeah. Like he's a little towards that, a little bit evil, but but also God's telling him to do things. You know, so it's okay. Again, it's it's Bush who is kind of the goofy president. <laughs> I, like, last episode we talked about Cyrano de Bergerac, and I'm like flashing back to that, just imagining God as like <laughs> the Cyrano de Bergerac of this, like George invade Iraq. It'll be great. <laughs> As you may have noticed, okay, God. God either hacks when he yells or whispers everything. <laughs> yeah, well, he doesn't like God. God never speaks in a still small voice. You know, whole thing with I- or uh, not Isaiah, the other prophet uh, Elijah. Now I like the burning bush thing where he just yells the whole thing. Making this decision on his simplistic black and white view of the world that you are either with us, the good guys, or against us. The bad guys. See, we didn't change that much when we got Trump. Yeah. Arguably, the overriding issue in his life is the difficult relationship with both his parents, but most specifically his father, as W was his father's namesake, and it was W's younger brother, Jeb Bush, who seemed to be following naturally in their father's footsteps, and as such, treated as the favored son. I haven't seen this movie, but I'm kind of interested now. Yeah. Because I like... I mean... It's interesting to think that the most powerful people in the world are Our also people. humans <laughs> who have, you know, psychological and, you know, sort of foibles. I mean, that... it's like the whole parents as people trope, only on a grander scale. Yeah. Because we have kids movies, just like parent comes in, says thing, and then parent leaves. You don't often see their life and what they're going through. This is that only with, you know, the people who run countries, which admittedly scary to think of them as actual flawed human beings. Right. But it's what we had to work with because as far as I'm aware, we don't have robots yet. Dag nabbit. Are you sure? Well, we do have robots who are who are capable of creating songs. Right, right. Because I've seen two songs and Sony uh, plans to release an entire album composed by AI. And I did watch a uh, robot react to the Morgan trailer. And at one point he said it was too scary and covered his camera with his little robot hands. Which was adorable and interesting. It seems probably scripted. Probably. But still adorable. Well, next up for our President's Day smorgasbord, we have Lincoln. One of my favorite presidents. He, he was, was okay. N- not, not so much what he did, but he was dramatic. Have you heard the allegation that he might have been gay? I don't care. Did he? Ha- no, I'm not. I'm just, it was interesting to me. Like, there was a friend of his that he had that they slept in the same bed. I, 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 at the time, it was not that weird because he just didn't have a bed. And his buddy was like, well, come over to my house and stay with me. And they just corresponded for a long time. And some people were like, <gasps> the gay. Is that a recent allegation or? Uh, well, I think so. I mean, people if it's a recent one, then it's well, it is entirely possible that he was gay. 
And considering who we wound up marrying, that would make sense. Well, he well he wound up marrying Mary Todd. However, I mean, the woman. There is also allegations that he like skipped. Well, possibly that he got Mary Todd pregnant, and that's why he had to skip out on a pre, like a woman that he was actually interested in. Uh, he, Lincoln is a human being, and it's, it's disappointing that there was so little information i mean there's a lot of information about lincoln obviously but even so stuff that we will never know it's mostly about sure. while he's in the presidency yes they, because i mean admittedly that's when people cared right we have his like you know his education thing and we have all the joke that he was born in a log cabin he built himself things like that <laughs> i love that joke so much <laughs> he built with his own bare hands <laughs> that's a good joke you ever heard that no i know it's I great i think i've heard it before but it hit me fresh so <laughs> anyway into the description in 1965, as the American Civil War winds inexorably towards conclusion, the U.S. President Abraham Lincoln endeavors to achieve passage of the landmark constitutional amendment, which will forever ban slavery from the United States. However, his task is a race against time, for peace may come at any time, and if it comes before the amendment is passed, the returning southern states will stop it before it can become law. That's interesting. That's messed up is what that is. He's like, that's really fascinating. The idea that like, oh man, I hope he has war to, doesn't get over soon. <laughs> he has to somehow either get it, push it through or like prolong the war without being obvious. Well, and there's the whole debate too of like, the, the, my dad has told me this a lot of times where the, the, you know, the North wins the war. Mm -hmm. and they're like, okay, you can't secede. South is like, fine, okay, great. You guys need to apply for reentry to the Union. We, you just said we couldn't secede. How do we, if we're getting I back I mean, they in, were basically <laughs> turned into territories. They weren't states. Uh, possibly, but I'm mean, saying the legality of that was yeah. super weird. And they're, they're making these people come back into the country, but not before we change the country in a way that they would not like. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not by the way, super not defending the South. As, like, they should have, they absolutely could have kept slavery. Not okay at any, like, that's super immoral. But, like, the political wrangling here is, like, incredibly weird. I never thought about that before. That would be, like, I get it, it's this movie, but that, just the whole concept is a really cool, like, political thriller. There should be, like, a show about this. Well, there's could a movie this. about it. I know, but a show could explore this in more depth. Possibly. And the, the movie's going to be focused mostly around Lincoln's machinations. Whereas you could have the entire North and the government, and then you'd also have that South trying to, you know, make it so the country would still be what they want. Here, this, this next sentence is also messed up. Lincoln must, by almost any means possible, obtain enough votes from recalcitrant Congress before peace arrives and it is too late. I, it's just the same thing the last sentence says, but holy crap, you're racing against peace. You're like, oh man. This war, it just needs to go on for a this little sounds bit longer. Awesome, for just like more people. Mm. I mean, I don't think he's actually manipulating. That that, that would I, I would not buy that at all. No, no, but but just mm. the, the idea of because Lincoln wasn't super happy that he was in war, in war. You know, he wasn't happy that he kept having to see people to die. Right, right, right. So the idea that he has to hope that the peace doesn't happen and that people keep dying so that he can stop get this bill pushed through. I gotta watch this movie now. This is fascinating. These are good. These, by the way, these are not our normal like. We, uh, the movie, the show's called Too Weird. Didn't watch. We're just too lazy to watch these ones. Weird uh, does not mean bad. That's true. As the nation confronts its conscience over the freedom of its entire population, Lincoln faces his own crisis of conscience: end slavery or end the war. Yep. Is this one of the Oliver Stone ones? No, this is uh, oh. Steven Spielberg. Oh, really? Yeah. One oh. of his like more recent ones that did not get people excited, like E.T. or you know something more pop co popcorn stuff, where he just does like slow contemplative or things. War Horse. War Horse is, is another one. War Horse is pretty rad. One of the few World War One movies. You're so bad about World the, War Two. There at this was. Point. I'm oh, so sick of World War Two movies. I, again, World War One is more morally gray, which is why it's so much more interesting. Yes, but World War Two. You don't have to worry about offending anyone because it's like you don't have to say the Germans are evil. You just have the Nazis and everybody's like, oh, yeah, those are bad guys. Even yeah. Germans are like, yeah, they're messed up. Whereas in World War Two, if you demon or World War One, you can if you try to demonize certain countries, they're going to be more offended. Well, they didn't. Nobody does. 
I don't think anybody deserves to be demonized in World War One. It's not like I know that's what I'm saying, but everybody was kind of sim- like commonly which is, culpable. Which is what World War or uh, War Horse does. Have you seen War Horse? No. There's a really great scene where um, the horse gets panics and running out of no man's land and gets tangled in barbed wire. Right. And both sides, they're, they're not they, they they're sitting there. They're hearing the horse scream in pain and agony, but they know if they go out there, they're probably going to get shot. But a uh, one of the Americans is just like, no, I'm going. And then a German also gets up and go, and they cut the horse free. And they get the horse up, they pet it. And they're just like, you know, we've turned this animal that only knows how to run away and made it run to danger. And they both agree to each other, and it's like, I hope I don't see you tomorrow. And they walk away. It's a really awesome scene. Yeah. It, it, they, yeah. Even World War II is a lot more. I mean, we've got obviously codif- codified the Nazis into instant bad guy. But, you know, t- at the end of the war, there was like people. You know, the, the, both sides were glad to be done fighting, and yeah. a lot of people were fighting just because they had to. I mean, their country told them to. And there's not- um a really good line with uh, it's not the first time it's used, but in Captain America, uh, the first Avenger, mm-hmm. when uh he's talking with the doctor, he's like, people forget that the first country the Nazis invaded was their own. Yeah, because not every German was a Nazi, and mm-hmm. while Nazism as a whole, terrible, terrible thing, not every single Nazi was just a rod to the core human being. This is a, sort of a serious episode of Two Weird Didn't Watch, apparently. That's cool. That's fine, yeah. So Finally, always, for you this... know, dumb jokes about aliens bursting out of people's heads. <laughs> Finally, for this episode, we ha- we're we going back to Oliver Stone, uh, because I couldn't find... I want to say honorable shout-out to Elvis and Nixon, uh, which is an, a Netflix-produced one about the time that Elvis went to the White House and tried to get a, become a, like, a drug enforcement officer for <laughs> President Nixon. I could not find, like, it's an amazing historical event, but I could not, in the time allotted me, find a good description of it. Elvis and Nixon remains unwatched and uncovered in this, but go Plenty read weird, that story. Apparently. And possibly go watch the movie. I think it's on uh, Amazon Prime. We're talking about Nixon here, Oliver Stone, another Oliver Stone movie. By the way, I, I tried to avoid all Oliver Stone ones because he also did JFK. Mm. And I was like, we can't like give the whole thing to Oliver Stone. But dude likes presents. He does. He likes his conspiracies too. JFK was got got into the weird conspiracy stuff. So there, there was some weird stuff going around with JFK. <laughs> Director <Magic> Oliver. Bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Director Oliver Stone's exploration of former President Nixon's strict Quaker upbringing. I didn't know that. Nixon was a Quaker. Apparently, I just find it interesting that he as, apparently a central theme of both the the two movies we covered had been religion. Yeah, and he probably dills into uh, JFK's Catholicism. Possibly. I mean, all. I mean, admittedly, that was a strong part. I was going to say upbringing. almost every U.S. president. I think every U.S. president has at least nominally said, "Yep, believe in God. I'm a Christian. I go to church somewhere." You know, that's sort of a a given. I mean, it was a big deal that JFK was a Catholic. It's like <gasps> not a Protestant. The Pope's going to tell him what to do. <gasps> uh, whereas, you know, but now now things are a lot. But even even in today's world, which things are a lot more humanist, the president still goes to church because you don't want to lose that vote. Yeah. Nick, uh, Nixon's strict Quaker u- upbringing, his nascent political strivings in law school, and his strangely self-effacing courtship of his wife, Pat. Well, this sounds nice. The contradictions in his character are revealed early in the vicious campaign against Helen Gahangan. Gahang- Gahang- that's her middle name, by the way. Spell she it. has a final name <laughs> as well. Her final name. <laughs> uh, it's spelled G-A-H-A-G-A-N. Gahangan. Helen Gahangan Lewis. Gilgamesh. Nope. <laughs> Helgen Gahangan Douglas. And the oddly masochistic Checkers speech. I guess he'd really like Checkers. How do you think he felt about rallies? Nothing again, nothing. You're not going to get... <laughs> He was like, the big Buford isn't that big, folks. That's not how Nixon sounded. <laughs> Give us a Nixon impression, Nation. I don't. Ha- I have no idea how Nixon sounded. No. Yeah. No. Not d- even. I am not a crook. You just get gravelly and the then g- waggle your face. Okay. Okay. You the big wa- Buford is no, not that big. You gotta folks. waggle the face that gives you the nice undulation he had. What? 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 You want me to? You want me to do this? Is that what you're saying about the big Buford? The big Buford was not that big. <laughs> But like, their yeah. fries are pretty great. They've got a good <laughs> seasoning on them. I'm giving this whole speech about checkers. 
that Helen Hank Gahang and Douglas person has a weird middle name. I can't pronounce it, but I call is her. Is that like a weird? Is that like a maiden name, or did her parents give her that? <laughs> because what's up with that? <laughs> Everybody's like, we're gonna vote for this guy. <laughs> One thing that was interesting, I was reading. Um, this is another you know tangent, but when he was running against uh, JFK, he uh, they had their debate, right? And people who watched it on TV. 100% believe that Kennedy won, but people who listened to it on the radio 100% believe that Nixon won. Just because Kennedy had a better presence and, you know, was more charming to look also, at. Also, Nixon didn't get makeup. Yeah, also. It was a big part of that. And at the time, television cameras were, like, they didn't have great color range anyway. Mm -hmm. So, like, you wanted to have makeup to sort of really exaggerate your features, and Nixon ended up really badly washed out. He just looked so bad. That people couldn't get around to like how gaunt and awful he looked. It wasn't. It, it wasn't even necessarily that uh, Kennedy's charisma brought him through. Although I think that helped somewhat. Mm -hmm. But that will come through on the radio. But it, like legit, go get in the makeup chair, guys. If you're going to be running for president, you know, swallow your pride. You're a man, but you can get some makeup. You that, get some or you look orange like Trump. Or that. But hey, it's better than being pale. Apparently. Apparently. Is that why he won? His defeat at the hands of the hated and envied John F. Kennedy in the 1960 presidential election. Did they hate each other? No, he was I just th hated by some people. Okay. It said hated. It didn't say hated by who. I, I thought they were pretty amicable. Uh, Maybe. Like Nixon, you know, he's hard against people he doesn't like, and he was, you know, went against him as much as he could, but I, there wasn't that much hate after, you know, he lost. Followed by the loss of the 1962 California gubernatorial race. Seems to signal the end of his career. Gubernatorial? Gubernatorial means governor race. Oh. You didn't know that? No. Oh. There's a great, by the way, there's a great uh, book, uh, Dave, Derry, Dave Barry's Politics or Dave Barry's Guide to America or something. I forget what. He has this great ongoing joke about how Nixon kept losing presidential races. And, just kept, and that was the last anyone heard of Richard Nixon. <laughs> and then, like, he comes back with, like, and then President Nixon lost the you know California gubernatorial race. And that was, and he does like five of these like incredibly huge losses. And you think, how is this guy still around? <laughs> At the very least, you got to respect him for being a, like hanging on and keeping trying. Uh, so it, it seems to be the end of his career. Yet, although wholly lacking in charisma, Nixon remains a brilliant political operator, seizing the opportunity provided by the backlash against the anti-war movement to take the presidency in 1968. It is only when safely in office, running far ahead in the polls for the 1972 presidential election, that his growing paranoia comes to full flower, trigger, triggering the Watergate scandal. This is really hard not to just reference free drama the whole time, by the way. Yeah? Well, yeah, go ahead. That's the end of the... Oh, right, in that thing. they uh, re-elect Nixon as president of the earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's a whole episode about Naturally. that. But no, it's um, great because he buys Bender's body because he sells it because titanium, titanium had gone way up in price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he buys it and he's running for president. They're like, uh, Mr. Nixon, the Constitution says nobody can run for president. True. But as you can see, I have a whole new body. And then later, uh, he gets the robot vote because robot body. And his aide's like, you have real charisma for the Knicks down. Nixon, with charisma, I can rule the universe. <laughs> he's just this raving lunatic and it's, it's great. It's interesting that he got such a, I mean, he did commit crimes and stuff and he was sort of not tricky dicky. yeah but i mean he definitely i mean the whole him with uh henry kissinger and the treaty with china i mean arguably that has not gone great for america I and mean, that's a whole debate about economics right and whether that was good or bad that we have more open trade cheaper stuff but fewer jobs yada yada uh however huge impl influence on the political scene like this guy made a splash as president and not in like a you screw the world up kind of way but like really was a pretty brilliant political operator it's interesting that oliver stone you know i mean w we talked about probably not a big fan of him uh -huh. but from the description that we read seems like he was delving into him as a real character yeah and not, he, he seems to not attack the people he makes movies about yeah i don't watch a lot of oliver stone not by choice not to i just haven't watched a lot yeah but even if he doesn't seem to like them, he, he points out their flaws, but also acknowledges what they did right. Yeah, and, and sees I them as a real human being, and that's really cool. Yeah. Um, it, it's, 
And, and there's uh, there's new stuff about Barack Obama that's done that as well. It talks about like his early years and how he was smoking pot in college and just kind of this young guy who is an upstart and meets his wife and, you know, noth- nothing like real sorted there or anything. But it's like, hey, this guy came up, you know, had hopes and dreams and fears and everything else just like the rest of us. And he just happened to become president. Uh, so that's cool. And that's what President's Day is all about, which is why we've covered it. All right. Presidents are pretty cool. Sometimes they're not. But they got a lot on their shoulders. They're very often weird. Yeah. Yeah. Hence the show name. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. If you <laughs> like this, uh, tell a friend about it. Tweet us out or whatever on the Facebooks, possibly. That's also good. Uh, next week, we'll be back to our regularly scheduled genre fiction. And we'll see you guys with another episode of Too Weird Didn't Watch. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>